Welcome to another edition of Pulp Nonfiction. Today I have with me a fellow endodontist, Dr. Richard Mons, out of uh, Portland, Oregon. Your um, CV, resume, history, and endo is vast and huge. Um, I, um, I, I'm going to post up your um, CV on, or your background information on the site beside the lecture, but um, as a start, I think uh, as a perfect introduction would be for um, you to speak to your your career. I, I don't think I could give it justice. There's, it's it's uh, thick and full and and uh, rich. Well, thank you, and yeah. Joel, thanks for thanks for having me on the podcast. It's yeah. really a privilege to uh, spend some time with you, and it was a privilege to have you on my podcast as well, the Dental Clinical Companion. Oh, so, thanks for having me on, and uh, welcome to all of our listeners. You know, uh, in terms of my career, it's it's kind of funny because when I started, I really didn't have any intent to have a public profile to do any key opinion leader work. And it's been a kind of a wild ride. You know, I, I, I've done a lot of different things. I've been really blessed to, to be an expert witness in malpractice claims. I got a chance to be the general manager for Bassiendo, which is a Brazilian nickel titanium manufacturer when they came to the U.S. Um, I owned an endodontic supply company for a while. And, you know, I've had a chance to lecture in a lot of places in the world and uh, consult for a lot of dental companies and visit a lot of dental schools. So, you know, you know, I've been blessed to be in 30 countries and write hundreds of articles for trade magazines globally. And I think the most important part of all that really is the relationships. Mm -hmm. It's the people that you meet. It's the friends that you make. It's the uh, the things that you learn from that experience, the cultural things, the, the dental things, um, how blessed we are in parts of the developed world compared to other places. Um, you know, I was in uh, Serbia, and for example, in Serbia, they were, it was really amazing. You look down at this box of files, and they're all hand files, and it looks like a peacock. You've got all these different colors, and they've got all these floss pieces of floss tied around. And I said, well, why do those hand files all have floss? Well, because we do it all by hand because we can't afford rotary files because we only get paid $20, $50, $100 for a procedure. We can't afford a box of imported files that cost 75 bucks. So those kinds of things are really valuable to be able to see. And so I, I've been blessed with the gracious hospitality of a lot of wonderful clinicians and their support staff around the world um, to, to be able to experience that. And on the industry side, you know, there have been a few things that have been really cool. I was, you know, Mani Dental in Japan has about 2,000 employees. If you looked at the passports for the Mani employees, there's probably no more than 10 foreign passports in their entire organization. Hmm. So for a period of time, I was the only foreigner that ever I uh, didn't work for them as an employee, but I was the only consultant for them, foreigner, that I think they'd ever had. So it was kind of like getting behind, you know, the, the, the wall or the curtain and kind of see that world from the other side and to be able to work so closely for that with them. And that was really amazing. You know, going to ADEC in Dubai and, you know, it was kind of like that moment you know, when you step out of Madison Square Garden, all of a sudden it's like, holy cow, there's 1,200 people here in the room. I was like, you know, the first lecture I gave was at a nursing home for a, um, a group of physicians on how they could identify abscesses. And there were six doctors who were there because they were voluntold. And that's where I started. So the minute when I walked out on the stage in Dubai, it was like, wow, you know, it's like, this is really cool. So things like that and going to Saudi Arabia and, you know, Joel, I was in Saudi and I'm standing in the room and on the right hand side are the women. You can't see any faces. They've all got, uh, I don't know the name of, of the, the gown, but they're mm -hmm. all covered except for their eyes on the left hand side is all the men. And there's a barrier down the middle of the room. And I'm like, who am I supposed to talk to? You know, am I supposed to talk to the right side, to the left side, to the to the barrier, you know, in the, in the middle of the room. So things like that. And on the clinical side of things, you know, I, I got to ultimately, I, I live actually at the beach in Oregon, uh, which is about two hours from Portland and I commute up to Alaska. So, you know, that's been an incredible adventure. I started out in public health 
uh, and I work now inside of a private practice outside of Anchorage, Alaska. So, you know, going up there has just been a window into this entire other world for me. Um, I've got, I'm a, I collect glass float balls, you know, for people on the, on the coastal areas, especially in the Pacific, those float balls are from Asia. They floated, you know, um, some of them across the ocean, some of them from the fishing fleets off the coast. So, you know, whether it's glass ball hunting with natives in Alaska or, you know, rafting, or I'm going on a floating moose hunt, September. Um, you know, we're going to fly two hours into the bush, get in our rafts and emerge 15 days later. But wow. that adventure would have never happened, just me and one other guy. Uh, so we're not going with a, an outfitter or anything like that. So that kind of adventure and that kind of, you know, just unique set of opportunities, I've just been so blessed and feel grateful for. But you know, I, I did all this ultimately for the adventure. I never did it for the money. And, you know, we'll get into it when we talk a little bit about the podcast. Um, I'm doing the podcast because I want to do the podcast, not because I make money out of the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important really briefly just to spend 30 seconds. You know, these, those are upsides to having some public profile outside the office. But I, I think it's important to mention the downside of it. And I think it takes you away from your family. I think mm -hmm. it takes you away from your practice. and ultimately you know the when you're out in the world it, you're there there's a business behind it and you know companies can change and the company's leadership can change their priorities can change and you can go from being really in demand on one day to to being you know leftover fish pretty quickly um and so in that sense you know there's a certain kind of um i forgot the guy Andy Warhol said you're going to be famous for 15 minutes. Yes, Andy so, Warhol. You know, yeah. You're going to be on the cover of Dentistry Today, and six months later, nobody knew who you were. So um, I think I never got let it get to my head, and I always knew that some parts of it were going to end and some parts of it could continue. But, mm -hmm. I, but I think that for anybody who's contemplating a public profile as an opinion leader in any part of dentistry, not just endodontics, I think you really have to keep perspective on why am I doing it? What, you know, what's my true motivation? Do I just really want to hear myself talk? And am I there for the adulation or am I there because I really want to teach and share what I know and, and be a resource for a lot of people who potentially could benefit from the information. So that's something that's going to be unique to every individual. So I'm sorry for the long winded answer, but that's a, kind of an upside downside reflection on on my my career yeah and your podcast i would imagine is a perfect opportunity for you to then uh bring some of your worldly experience all those people you've met over the years and all these different places to bring um all their perspectives in you know years later you might have met someone in saudi or japan years ago and then it's like oh let's meet up and and and, and review matters now and to bring in all those different perspectives. I, I, I mean, I've, I've seen other dental podcasts and they're good and there's lots of good ones out there, but I, I really enjoy yours because it's all these different perspectives and views and it's, it's quite interesting. And yes, I'm endo, 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 and you're endo, 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 but we do happen to speak to other people too. <laughs> well, you know, just, just to kind of briefly describe it. Um, yeah. My goal in, in producing the podcast and so Medmark Media, we produce it together. Mm -hmm. um, they don't pay me to do it. There's no money exchange, but they are my partners in this, mm -hmm. in the sense of um, uh, they um, allow people to become aware of it through the Medmark universe. And Lisa Moeller, who is the uh, owner and the CEO of Medmark, is just a dynamo. She's a wonderful person, very knowledgeable. And, and so in that sense, I'm really grateful to, to work with her, work with Adrienne Good, who is um, one of her staff. She's got a wonderful staff. But my, my goal in the podcast was to do something different. It was to interview global experts in various topics. Mm -hmm. um, I've come to learn I have a little bit of OCD, <laughs> and I will admit it, you know, I'm just interested in a lot of different things. So I didn't want to just talk about endodontics. Um, I wanted to talk about all the specialties at a really high level. And I, and I made a commitment that I didn't want to just talk to people about how to drill, fill, and bill faster and make more money. 
that 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 had nothing to do with the goal. It was, you know, for a guy like Joel Franson to listen to somebody talk about craniofacial orthopedics or to the orthodontist who wants to learn a little bit more about root resorption or the prosthodontist who wants to hear the endodontic perspective on restorability. I mean, we've, we've done, we have podcast literally lined up every week to the middle of October. So we wow. have a tremendous backlog of material, um, but the diversity of the material is what one of the things I'm most proud of because I, I have no interest in um, trying to disagree with any of the guests, because and this is relevant, because I had one guest basically back the focal infection theory. Mm. And tell me that you know focal infection was the way to go, and I'm like, what do you do? I mean, I can't say you're a knucklehead in, in <laughs> front of the universe. So yeah. I just said, well, you know, the, the endodontic literature would strongly disagree with you, but, yeah. uh, and let's move on, which I yeah. did. But yeah. in, in essence, I wanted to have quality over quantity. And, um, you know, ultimately how I got started is, is out of kind of a, a bad story. And it was one of the disappointments in the, in the public career, I was the chief dental officer at Vista Dental. Um, I had rearranged my professional life to take that position. And four months after it started, I got a phone call. And after that phone call, my professional life changed, which was, we don't have the money. And basically, we don't need you anymore. And um, goodbye. Mm -hmm. So, and your email will be turned off in a half an hour and your credit cards are voided, et cetera, et cetera. So it was kind of a rude, not a, not, it was a rude awakening or a, it really kind of wow, because I had changed everything to mm -hmm. take that position on. So from that disappointment, um, which was based, you know, they, I don't know, financially, for whatever reason, that was the official reason I was given. So I, I what do I do with my professional career? And where, where, where do I take this? So the short version of a long story was, I'd been thinking about a podcast for a long time. I wanted to do something unique. And coincidentally, I had a trip scheduled to Burma, Laos, Vietnam, and then Hong Kong. And I was going by myself. It was one of those always wanted to do because I wanted to go to Bagan in Myanmar and Burma. And uh, so I took like 10 books on podcasting with me and I read my brains out on the way over while I was there on the way back. And out of that um, came came the podcast and the experience has been really good. You know, it's like taking a private CE course, you know, a whole lot of topics that I otherwise maybe never would have been exposed to. And, you know, like when I was traveling to lecture, I get to meet a lot of very, very talented people via the podcast. So there's times where I'm just sitting there kind of tingling because I'm going, it is really cool to be talking to this person who knows so much about something that I don't and to be able to pick up these clinical, clinical pearls. And, um, We'll get into you know some of the surprises and ups and downs of podcasting in a second, mm -hmm. but it's just it's been a really good experience. Um, I don't make any money off of it. Maybe in the future it'll be financially uh, profitable, but I didn't start it for that. And you know, I told my wife, I said, "Sweetie, if 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 I don't make a dime, and I just do this, I'm doing it because I love it, and I I'm gonna love it because I know I'm gonna love it." Um, and um, she said, "Okay." And it's been great, so. Oh, perfect. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, I'm just gonna bury this. Always an interruption, but um, <laughs> yes. Well, one of the things is it's good not to have an echo chamber for the podcast, right? Because then it's more opening and inviting to others, right? And that that's what I I, I noticed with yours is I mean you have the focal infection theory person there, and it's good to know what the other people are saying. You know, you don't necessarily need yeah. to hear the you know the, the choir singing all the time you might want to hear some some contrary voices because you know maybe there is something to what they're saying that warrants further investigation or you know when i finished endo i i learned a lot about we chatted about this on the podcast i i dove in and learned a lot about implants because i didn't get much in implants and endo endo exo endo exo endo exo i better know about implants 
right? And I think it, and then so I think if you broaden your scope, like which is what you're doing with the podcast, it's 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 quite helpful. And yeah. it, it could have been the Richard Mount's echo chamber. It was like, I'm not going to get interviewed unless I say, you know, his way or the highway. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. You know, and, and so it, it's funny you say that because back when I was most heavily, we'll call it embedded on the cyber on endo side, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, the dense ply guys, you know, they were obviously on the other team. So this was Manchester United and Liverpool. Yes. And, um, but you know, it's funny how things change. And funny how some of those guys, those guys, you know, now they, who shall remain unnamed, are going to be guests on the podcast, mm-hmm. who were formerly playing for the other team. And, you know, and I don't care. And it's, it's really interesting, too, because I've done enough podcasts now where I've, I've got, without getting into who the interviewer, interviewees were, mm-hmm. I've got one guy saying that TMD is caused by X. I've got another guy who's saying TMD is caused by Y. The first guy's wrong. The first guy's saying the second guy's wrong. So it's up to the viewers, it's up to the listeners to, to make those kinds of decisions in terms of um, you know, which of these contradictions they choose to ultimately, uh, which, which side they wanna be on. But anadonically, you know, I've never been um, that religiously dogmatic to a particular position. Mm-hmm. And I, I would never rip somebody because they take, take minimally invasive, for example. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You've got people with the, is it the truss access where they're making the two small holes and they're leaving the dentin in between. You know, if somebody wants to do that and they really feel that they can do it right, I'm not going to sit there and, you know, get in a part of my French pissing contest with them about, you know, whether, whether that's right or not. And I don't want them, you know, up my skirt that they don't maybe like what I do. Um, so I don't know. I, 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 maybe I'm just more ecumenical in that sense that I think it's more important that we talk about it. We have a conversation and to your point that we be exposed to all these different viewpoints. And that's just to one degree or another, what I'm encouraging on, on the podcast for sure. Yes, no, no, definitely. Yeah. And, uh, so speaking with a podcast, your three biggest surprises now that you've done it for a little while. Well, I actually listed five, so I'll try ah, to melt. There we melt go. Five <laughs> but you know, one of the surprises is that big names, and I think we've interviewed some big names, and I'm not going to name the names, mm-hmm. but that doesn't translate into big listenership, which has mm-hmm. been interesting. And some of the lesser names can have a much, much greater um, number of listeners for a bunch of different reasons. Yeah. So I think that that sometimes there's an overexposure in in a big name that well I heard so and so so and so there and you know maybe the tune doesn't change you know you know you're going to hear the same song again. Um, one of the other surprises to me, Joel, is the dental industry. As far as I can tell, they don't see any value in podcasting. To me, it's shocking that so few dental companies have podcasts, and I think this is really a valuable missed opportunities. Um, you know, um, some some docs have been hard to work with, but you know, for the most part, the guests have been really polite. They've been very easy to work with. Um, I think one of the other surprises, which is a little bit more of a conclusion than a surprise, is I think every dental practice should have its own post- podcast even if it's once a month. I mean, so you're on Zoom, I Mm -hmm. use Zoom as well. It's very easy to record on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And just getting on the podcast to say, I'm Joel Franzman, uh, Franson, sorry. And in my uh, office this month, I took this class. And my case of the month look like this. And these are the things we do in infection control. And keep it at a level that the public um, can understand, I think people appreciate that. And I, I think it says a lot because if you're willing to do it, the guy down the street probably is not. And so I think every practice should should have some form of podcast, even if it was 10 minutes, 15 minutes, something really simple, really straightforward. It's not technically hard to do. It's not particularly expensive. And I also think that every business of any size should have its own podcast you know, regardless of whether it's a dental practice. So our dental manufacturing partners, our, our dental supply companies, um, you know, to talk about techniques and to have opinion leaders talk about their products. 
I think there's a place for that um, because for every podcast, there's a, a listener who it's going to mean something for. Um, but, you know, biggest, biggest surprise would be that big names don't necessarily translate into big, big listener numbers and vice versa. Mm -hmm. that, that I can, We'll get into it a little bit later. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share one success story, but uh, I w I, we had an unbelievable response to one particular podcast that I'll share with you a little bit later. Okay. Yeah, but that's a, that's a fantastic idea. I never even thought about that, about a podcast for your office to your patients or your referrals. Because it's one thing to read something, but it's another thing to listen to it or to, to see it. And yeah. um, right now, I think a challenge for a lot of dentists um, will be to calm the fears of the public and the staff to coming back to your office. Right. And so if you say, well, this is what I've done and you can show it, and this is how the office is gonna be, you know, and, and if we end up looking like asbestos removal men, then at least it's not gonna be scary. You're gonna see me in my outfit. Yeah. And yeah. the other thing too is perhaps that, that ability to chit chat with your patient in the operatory is gonna be hampered because we're gonna be masked up that maybe a podcast is a way to go. Cause I know I'm seeing emergencies right now and I have that uh, N90, N, N100 mask on. It looks, you know, I look like a painter and they can't hear me that well. And you don't want to talk that long cause you're basically like a fighter pilot. You got that thing on your face and you're like, okay, well, you can't really chit chat. It's like, and so this, we might need technology to help us to bridge that gap. Yeah, you know I mean? As we're kind of exploring this a little bit, my vision of it would be that a general practice or a specialty practice mm -hmm. would want to have about five different intro podcasts. You know, this is insurance. This is our financial policy. This is our infection control. Uh, this is our treatment planning philosophy. This is what we can do to make you comfortable. These are the options you have. And then when the, so those are all online, they're on the website and, and your staff can say, Mrs. Smith, Mr. Jones, uh, to learn more about our office, there's five podcasts on our, mm -hmm. on our site. And then, you know, interview the staff people so that when Mr. Jones comes in, he meets James at the front desk or Monica at the front desk. And now he knows who Monica is. And he can say, you know, I listen to that podcast and I know that you like to walk your dog, you know, whatever. And, and you build relationship, you build community, you build togetherness in that sense. So I'm a, I'm a huge fan in it. And um, so I, I think that um, it, for most offices, it, it's, it's such a low bar technically that it'd be um, easy to do, very inexpensive, but huge benefit to the people that you're, you're trying to reach out to and build relationship with. Yes, no, no absolutely. Yeah, you planted a seed there. I, I didn't mean to give. I didn't mean to give you homework. I, didn't mean to give you <laughs> I have a to-do list now. Yeah, yeah no, that's know. it's absolutely fantastic. Because yeah, one of the things you know, just post up instructions to a patient. Because when they're in the office and you tell them you get that yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. and they get stressed in the office and then they leave even though they have the handout they didn't get any of it. Watch my right. podcast, I'll tell you about it. And then you yeah. can talk much more subtly, much more better about the subtleties of you know pain that's annoying or pain that's troublesome. You know, yeah. okay, okay, this is just annoying. Okay, well you don't need to call me for annoying. <laughs> yeah. So, so I don't, there's no self-promotion here. If, if yeah. any of, of the, of the people watching want to um, get a, a short primer from me on how to develop a podcast, I'm yeah. happy to share it. So just reach out to me, just please put my email in the yeah. show notes of the, of your show and just trust me on this one. It is not technically complicated to do and it's not expensive and, um, you know, I read, I read one interesting, I read a lot of interesting podcasting books, but I read one that was the hundred best ideas regarding podcasting. Mm -hmm. And the one idea which just kept coming back over and over and over again was just do it. Don't worry about the sound quality. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. Just do the first one and they will get better. Yes. And I think that was the best advice that I saw. Uh, mm. But if anybody's listening and you want to know, like, where do I start? What do I do? I can, it, it's not rocket science. And, you know, just, I'm sorry to get off track in the weeds for 10 seconds, but if, if Joel and I wanted to start a podcast, we mm. could record it, we could produce it, and we could have it live 
on Stitcher or Spotify or Apple Music probably within four hours. You know, because it, 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 so it's, this is not a high bar. It's kind of the wild west of communications, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so for anybody listening, I just, I can't strongly recommend it strongly enough. It, it has value. Perfect. Yeah, no, that's, it, I'm excited, but I do have a to-do list now. It's yeah. giving me a job, <laughs> as, as I'm sure many other people though, but it's, it's, it's go. a good job, right? We, it, and we have time. Yeah. Well, now yeah. we do. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Do you have a sense that there's a log jam waiting for us come uh, the next few months? Oh, you know, it's funny you ask me this question. Um, I don't think we have a log jam coming. Yeah. I think what we have is we're going to have a lot of scared people. I mean, I'm going to answer very honestly and directly. I think we're going to have a lot of frightened people who don't want to fly, who don't want to go in grocery stores, who, who are going to be very timid about the re we'll call it reapproximation of society mm -hmm. and part of that's going to be the reverb into the dental universe mm -hmm. my my reading of the tea leaves mm -hmm. is that um we are going to have a a slow gentle demand rising demand and i think we're going to be 24 to 48 months 36 months till we have anything like normality prior to mid-march of this year yeah i i don't i don't think i don't think there's going to be a zillion people rushing out to get their teeth clean to get their root canals done the crown i don't dentistry as we knew it as, as we knew it it's going to be to me i could be totally wrong but i think the recovery is going to be very much like um the 2008 recession mm -hmm. it took about three or four years it was about 2011, 2012 before you got the sense that, yeah, let's go buy a Tesla. Yeah, you know, we're going to start blowing money the way that we did in 2007 and a half. Yeah. That's my take. Yeah. No, no, I, I, absolutely. I, I, I agree with you. Um, I'm not sure I mentioned this when I spoke to you, but uh, um, I spoke to a dentist who was, who was in Hong Kong and he said back in uh, China, where they started to relax the rules and, 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 people were allowed to interact a little bit more Starbucks prior had dropped 80%, you know, in, in China, like their, their activity and it didn't swing back. That's now the new normal. It's now growing from that, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and so it's, whoa, you know, not, not like nine 11 where all the businesses went down for a bit and then everything just spring back up and yes, flights were interfered with, but going to the grocery store and things like that weren't interfered with, but this and I think you described it very well. Is yeah, it's there's it's gonna take a while to claw back, just like in the I mean, recession. I mean, like for example, so you're a Liverpool yeah. fan, yeah. You know, would you? They lift they lift the ban in the UK, mm -hmm. and you can walk into Anfield with forty thousand yeah. people. Would yeah. you do it? Yeah. I mean, now we're talking Liverpool here. I know, right? I know. And how you are you gonna feel if some guy sneezes beside you? Law. You know, I mean, you got you got your guys, right? Yeah. You got the Dutch guy, I can't pronounce his name, who's so amazing too. Oh yeah. It's like, okay, so what a tower that guy is, right? Um, he just looks tough, just looking yeah, at Virgil him. Virgil van Dyke, yeah. You, you yeah. wouldn't want to run at him, right? No. But anyway, so, would, you know, I mean, do you, I mean, would I walk into Old Trafford? Yeah. I, I mean, you know, I mean, that's the cathedral of all yes. things. Yes, oh yeah. Great and good, right? But I don't know. You know, yeah. so this is bad news for Kenny Chesney and for Taylor Swift. Yes. Uh, uh, for the big, the big, you know, and even would you walk into your church? There's 250 people at mass or at the service, whatever. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, how long is it going to take before you trust that the person next to you isn't going to cough on you? You know, airlines. It, so it's going to be, I, I think it's going to be a slow uptick. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. People will be uh, very cautious and those people who are naturally reserved now have a massive yeah. reason to be even more cautious. It's going to be harder to coax them out of the, yeah. out of the house. Yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. So yes, we touched on it now, the COVID pandemic. So um, for endo and, or how's it affected you personally? We haven't touched on that. Well, basically it's put me out of a job and I'm living on savings. Uh, none of the government, aid 
not a single, I, I'm eligible for four different loans and potential benefits and zero has come in. Uh, with all respect to the U.S. government, the mechanics of the rollout and the administration of this has been less than desirable. Um, so it, in that sense, it's been tough. I mean, dentistry in Alaska and Oregon are, are closed with varying potential restart dates. Um, you know, Alaska has an elective May 4th date, but as I alluded, they're saying that you're going to need to have your patients get a COVID test within two days of having any kind of treatment. And here in Oregon, the elective restart date is June 15th, but there's no, that, that's clearly subject to change and we don't know what conditions they're going to put on that. Um, for me personally, it's been a little bit of a backhanded blessing because we we're selling our house and moving down the road. So, you know, my wife has me packing, moving, shipping, painting, you know, stuff that uh, I'm, I'm a conscripted labor that's uh, maybe a little bit closer in hand than I uh, wouldn't have had. But, you know, just like everywhere else, I'm sure the same in Vancouver, uh, where you are, um, you know, it's, it's really palpable the effect uh, on people as they move around other people, you know, from the grocery store to, I live on the beach, so how people interact on the beach and how much less traffic there is and how much less interaction. So, you know, we're going to get over it. We're going to get through it. It's going to be okay. We're going to talk about, do you remember when, um, but, you know, and, and I, I, one other quick thing about this, and I, this, again, is a massive podcast unto itself, but I, I think one of the books and volumes are going to be written about whether the cost of shutting everything down was worth, mm -hmm. whether it was worth it in terms of lives saved and lives altered when you look at the the 360-degree you know, how much domestic violence was there caused by this? How much alcoholism? How many people leave the workforce? Um, all of the different changes that are, you know, macro changes that are happening in our economy, uh, the changes that are going to happen to how we do business, you know. Um, and, you know, we could go off into the weeds into that forever. But I, I think this is going to really be a dramatic um, focal point, inflection point for, for our future dentistry and socially between us as human beings and between countries. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a different world as we evolve out of this. Yes, no, no, definitely. Um, for instance, Sweden, minimal changes. You know, they kind of said, well, we really don't hug and kiss like Italians. So <laughs> we're going to, I gonna wish care. they did. I wish they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't tell, and, my wife. Don't tell my wife I said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, 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 uh, they seem to be doing okay. Um, but, uh, then, you know, you have what's going on in New York and it's, you know, it's awful. And then, yeah. It, and, and then the response everywhere else. Yeah. When it all said and done, it'll be interesting to see, like, did we overcorrect? Did we undercorrect? Yeah. And, and, you know, to be honest, hindsight's twenty twenty. It's hard to know. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I, I never talk politics mm -hmm. and I'm not going to talk politics now. I won't mm -hmm. bore you. It's fascinating to me how many Monday morning quarterbacks we have. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you go to the website, real clear politics, mm -hmm. Uh, there's a point counterpoint on virtually every part of this larger macro conversation. And, you know, expert A says, reopen the economy. Expert B says, no, we got to keep it closed. Mm -hmm. And there just is almost kind of no way. I don't, I mean, I don't know. It's a weird effect of social media. You know, it, it there, it's almost impossible to foresee a consensus on what, the best way to go would be because there just seems to be such a divergence of opinion, which if you boil it kind of all back into endodontics is your minimally invasive versus your traditional. It's your sun endo versus your passive ultrasonic irrigation. And my point is, it just seems to be the, the nature of the human condition mm -hmm. that we just seem to want to tribalize into this or that yes. rather than have some form of let's have a beer 
let's meet in the middle. You're not going to be happy. I'm not going to be happy, but we should be able to coexist. Anyway, um, we're, we're definitely not seeing that at least, you know, I can't speak to the rest of the world because I don't live in Europe and I don't live in Canada, uh, but we're definitely not seeing that in, in the U.S. And I don't think to be fair, we're gonna, I think we're gonna get into this in a minute, but I don't think we're seeing definitive leadership from organized dentistry. And, and if we ever needed organized